Today, we're looking at a magenta ink by Montegrappa Fuchsia. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, there's timestamps down below so that if you're only interested in certain parts, you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. You can also follow me over on Instagram, and if you're new here and like fountain pen ink reviews, I would invite you to subscribe. In order to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then inked up this Sailor My First Pen with a medium fine nib. I wrote with it for a day, and I used it to take the notes for this video. In order to have some standardization in my writing samples, I always use Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, which means it came in a vial, something like this one. To keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Now the extra fine is about the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, but it does offer spots of shading, like the T and the is a little bit darker, the K, or sorry, the T and the is a little bit lighter, the K and quick is a little bit darker, the B and brown is a little bit darker, the word the is darker than the beginning of over, where over starts light and gets dark, seven seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, and again, spots of shading, like the word quick, it starts a bit darker, it gets lighter in the middle, darker onto the end. Brown starts darker and gets lighter. It's not all over, it's not very obvious, but it definitely is there. 12 seconds to dry. This scrubby for both shows no real color variation, although we do see some in the writing samples. Tomoy River. No bleeding, normal Tomoy River ghosting. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the 1.1 with no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. 10 seconds to dry. The I'm looking to try and figure out what that was supposed to mean for me or if I just had some weird mark I put there. The medium is slightly darker then the extra fine or the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade, 16 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it, and we didn't get it. And Tomoy River, Tari, and Rhodia, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 8 seconds to dry. Medium is quite a bit darker than the extra fine and stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen or shade, 12 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both shows no color variation, and we didn't get any color variation. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see that this magenta or fuchsia ink is pure. It's one dye and it works its way up, going from lighter to darker, as you would expect to see with any unmixed ink. Now, that's because there's a couple ways you can uh, mix colors, red, yellow, and blue, or you can use cyan, magenta, and yellow. Uh, this is using the magenta, if it was a base, it would be a perfect prime for that mixing. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And the only real difference we're seeing is the ink is creeping its way up, leaving some of it behind, which does make you feel like it wants to be capable of bonding with the paper, but isn't. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I see a lot of blurriness that's shown up. That extra fine went to about a medium, and it's got a lot of feathering all over, but you can completely read what's there, which does make me feel okay using it in a note-taking situation. 
water is reactivating and lifting all this ink off the page, although it hasn't gotten all of it with only 30 seconds, it will, given just a little bit more time, so water is all you need to clean this out of your pen. Pen flush does everything that water does and nothing more. Now, I, when I dabbed the paper towel, I think I basically held it there a little too long, putting some of that ink back onto the paper. One third bleach solution, as you would expect, completely obliterates it, but there's no need to use bleach solution to get this out of your pen. For the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with a realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Now, I'm gonna link the video that shows how I do my testing and calculations. Montegrappa's Fuchsia has a viscosity of 1.85, making this a wetter ink. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. I average all six of those numbers. Now, for the inks I've tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Montegrappa's Fuchsia has an average dry time of 11 seconds, making this a faster drying ink. Instead of finding inks that look like Montegrappa's Fuchsia, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I wanted a nice blue-black and went with Diamine's Eclipse. The second writing sample is done on yellow rhodia, white lines, and black and red notebooks. Here we're looking at the yellow rhodia to see how the yellow paper can affect the tone of the ink compared to the white paper we used before. And we can see that universally, these inks are getting darker for being on yellow paper. However, they keep the fuchsia or magenta color. So that's very interesting, but it does make it darker uniformly. Black and red notebook. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine, slightly lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, five seconds to dry. Medium is significantly darker than every other tone on the page with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, seven seconds to dry. The scrubby for both shows no color variation and we didn't get any. Last up is white lines. It's not really known to be fountain pen friendly, although I've found some inks that did well with it. This, not one of them. A lot of bleeding, a lot of ghosting. The 1.1 has quite a bit of tiny feathering all over it. It does have some spread. It has no halo sheen and no shade. The extra fine is about the same tone as the 1.1. It performs best with the extra fine on this paper. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Five seconds to dry. Medium is much darker than any other tone that we get on the paper. It has a ton, ton of feathering all over it. It is entirely feathered, the whole thing. So it's not even worth pointing out where the feathers are because I don't know that I can find spots that there are no feathers. It does have spread. That medium made its way to about a broad. It has no halo sheen and no shade, six seconds to dry. The scrubby for both shows no color variation and we didn't get any color variation. And that is all that I have for the writing sample. So what do I think of Montegrappa Fuchsia? It's got great color variation and very nice shading throughout the writing. Now there's so many things about using this ink that make me feel like I should really like it, but for some reason I can't. The tone really makes me just not care for it, which is a shame because it is such a good, well-performing ink. So what nib and feed will give the best writing experience for this ink? While the tone of the ink is absolutely not for me, I do think that a medium flow fine nib put down the nicest tone and gives it the opportunity to show some of the shading that this ink has to offer. If you've made it this far and you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I'm gonna remind you to subscribe. Thanks for watching.